there's power in vulnerability. And like we've talked about many times, it's okay to show the scar. It's not like you're showing the wound. Right. I love that saying. That's one of my favorite sayings that you taught me way back when we started working together. Welcome to Becoming Virtuosa, the podcast with Dr. Susan Crockett. You are listening to episode number 36, Sharing Your Heart, a very special interview with celebrity image and brand expert and national TV producer, Starly Murray. Welcome to Becoming Virtuosa, the podcast that encourages you to become your best virtuosa self. Each week, Dr. Susan Crockett goes where the scalpel can't reach, exploring conversations about how to be, heal, love, give, grow, pray, and attune. For the first time ever, she's bringing the personal one-on-one teaching that she shares with individual patients to you on this broader platform, a weekly source of inspiration and encouragement designed to empower you. By evolving ourselves as individuals, we influence and transform the world around us. Please help me welcome board-certified OBGYN specializing in minimally invasive GYN surgery, internationally in the top 1% of all GYN robotic surgeons, a certified life coach, and U.S. News top doctor, your host, Susan A. Crockett, MD. This is my wonderful guest, Starly Murray, national television producer and lifestyle entrepreneur. I'm so excited to have you on the show today, Starly. I'm really excited. So first of all, I want to introduce y'all to Ollie. This is Ollie, my little amazing dog. Our studio is called Hollywood Studios. He's the most important part of the show. Yeah, we're all, we're all extras. <laughs> we're all extras. Ollie is the thing. So we decided to start the show because I'm a physician. I'm actually a surgeon. And I realized that there were a lot of conversations I was having with patients in the office privately that had nothing to do with surgery, right? We started having conversations about things that cause healing and well-being where the scalp can't reach. And so that kind of became the theme of this is how do we share those conversations for helping us become our better selves and healthier selves for those things where we're going where the scalpel can't go. I love it. I love it. Well, and I'm just a walking, talking testament to that because that's how I originally met you was in the doctor's office and right. hearing those life-changing comments and recommendations. And really more than that, just I saw the fact that you cared in, in a, just in a deeper way than, yeah. you know, I, I see. Yeah. Thanks, Starly. So we decided we wanted to do a show. The format, as you can see, is very conversational. We're going to be having all kinds of guests on. We've got financial planners coming on. I've got other doctor friends coming on. Mm -hmm. I've got other female entrepreneurs coming on. Authors, Authors, male, female, author speakers. Ollie. Ollie. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) We do have a very special episode, the Ollie episode. He was actually the first one. Yeah. I know, I know. My cheeks are still hurting because I'm smiling so big. <laughs> Ollie, like, you don't want to be, like, on the same set as Ollie. He totally upstaged it's you. You're still the show. <laughs> yeah. That'll be coming up. That'll be fun. So welcome to the show, and welcome, Starly Murray. Thank you so much. So today we're talking about sharing your heart. Yes, yes. Yeah. And you've always been very generous with your love and your praise with me. And and then acknowledging that that's not just something I like to do with my hands, like so many of us do. But yeah. uh, thank you for always acknowledging me and seeing me. Well, you're welcome. And you know, I think that's maybe one of the most important things about what I wanted to share with our audience today is this show didn't come about just because I thought, oh, I want to be, <laughs> I want to expose myself to the whole world, you know? No, I'm actually kind of camera shy. Right. So, you know, you're also my media coach. This has been a long time coming, but yeah. this really is coming from my heart wanting to share with you. And so I see you. I want to get to know you a little bit better. If you find that this is something fun that you enjoy looking and you like our topics of conversation, I hope that you'll I'll help us share that with others because this topic is really what the whole show is. It's sharing our heart no matter what we do. And that's how the whole thing came about. Yeah, I know there's that golden thread that's throughout, you know, many of your episodes. And that's why it was just so cool that we started, you know, or that, you know, had this first episode being specifically about sharing your heart. Yeah. And uh, people ask me all the time, well, you know, how do you share your heart with others, right? Because a lot of us share our 
love in our heart in different ways. Yep. Right? Yeah. Like, I saw, we're like acts of service in our family, you know? Yeah. And, uh, you know, for me, if you feed me, yeah. I'm like... <laughs> it's like, all in. Especially along. if it's vegetables. Oh, yeah. It goes a long way. <laughs> <The> sprouts. <laughs> yeah. I've got a, a, a secret uh, greens thing. Yeah. <laughs> it's not a secret anymore. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, <yeah>. Outed. <laughs> so, I have kind of a funny story about sharing my heart. Yeah. You know, I'm dating. Mm-hmm. That's mm, that's a whole nother episode. In fact, I think we have a guest that's coming up that we're going to do about dating over relationships yeah, in, in, during middle age. But the sharing your heart with others when it comes to romantic relationships or that kind of relationship. You know, I've gotten my heart broken a couple of times. We got some stories, y'all. We got stories. Well, stay tuned. But one of the advice, some of the advice that I got recently was, well, you just you just go into too much, both feet in. You should hold back a little bit. Don't yeah. go wholeheartedly yep, into yep. things. And I just thought, you know what? That's just not me. I can't yeah. do it. Well, that's the advice that the people that are closest to you that we want to give you because we love you and we want to protect you. But I agree with you when you say you should just go for it. Yeah. Like I would much rather have loved deeply, loved and lost than not loved at all. Or right. you know what the other thing about it is? If you kind of go in tiptoeing and like half-hearted. How does that work out? It just prolongs the agony if it doesn't work out. It doesn't make it better. Yeah. It doesn't protect your heart. In fact, it may be worse because you go in longer. Yeah. It doesn't give you your best start. Yeah. And that's no different than, you know, outside of the, you know, intimate dating relationships. That's just putting your heart out there for others in general. I know that, you know, a lot of times we want to be, oh, I want to be careful what I say and I don't hurt someone's feelings. And so I get that. That's, you know, messaging is one thing, but just your energy and your demeanor and putting your heart out there is another. And I, I think one of the biggest lessons that I got was literally from a, yes, I'm going to say it, cassette tape. Oh, no. That is a wow. audio is that? Uh, <laughs> a thing that you can, it's, okay, I'm old. But um, <laughs> so, yeah, Zig Ziglar, it was the first positive male role model voice I heard growing up. Ah, uh, on a cassette team. tape. Cassette tape. Yep. And all I remember this man saying was, you can have everything you want in life if you just help enough other people get what they want. And I went, well, that's cool because I already like to help people. Yeah, that's how your nat your nature is uh, to be a helper. Yeah, yeah. There, there you go. So there you awesome. go. Thank you, Zig Ziglar. Yeah, that was a big touching moment to meet him too. Yeah. So first big fatherly hug I ever had, and wow, wouldn't trade it for a million. million that's quite a hug. Million bucks. Oh yeah, it was a million dollar hug from, dollar. from a dad. <laughs> Sweet. So, what do you think are some of the challenges for sharing our heart? Because you know, a heartbreak is definitely one of the risks. Can you think of others, you know? Well, I thought of it. I thought of this interesting challenge because uh, you know how we bring our heart into, like you said, full on with our relationships, right? Our family, you know, intimate dating relationships, yeah. you know, but in our business, like when is that that weird crossover? Like, you know, I grew up in a family business, so we were so heart centered, heart first. Yeah. But, you know, I think that you can have healthy, healthy boundaries and still share your heart. Right. I remember a crazy, crazy gig that I did, a production gig where it was one of those, like, if we had an, an hour, I could literally tell you that many details of how many things went wrong and how hard it was. Wow. But I'm going to give you this 30-second version, which is not even that long, which is basically it was one of the hardest jobs I'd ever done. And at any point in time, no one would have thought much if I would have walked off the set because a lot of other people walked off the set. It was, uh, Goodness. It was a, a situation where people weren't being very good to the crew and all of that. But I thought, you know what, this isn't a reflection upon how they're treating me. This is a reflection of my standards. And I was new. This was 25 plus years ago. And I stuck the whole gig out. You were like 12 years old. I was. I, uh, here's your here's your fifty dollars, or is it a hundred? What is it? Oh, it's wine. <laughs> wine. Yeah. I'm oh, sorry. Gotcha. Gotcha. So yeah, when I was twelve, I did that gig and, you and stuck it out. I stuck it out, and I did it just for those standards. But guess what ended up happening? Because I shared my uh, heart during a challenge, I ended up getting called out by the the producers of America's Most Wanted to wow. work with them, and then I went from like makeup to set design to producing national TV. Just because they had heard of me on that one crazy job. So my tip on that is sharing your heart is do the right thing even when you think nobody's looking. That's a great tip. Like, I think we should put that like 
Ping, right ding, here. Ping. Tip number one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, so. that's awesome. Super cool. I love it. I think the other thing that is really important for us to talk about a little bit more is that importance of setting boundaries. Mm. Because like in this relationship yeah. thing that I'm going through, it's not like I'm going all like splashing myself all over the place. And right, right. Not the, I'm certainly not the needy chick. Probably the opposite. But yeah. So being wholehearted or going into a relationship wholeheartedly doesn't mean you don't do it without boundaries. So yeah. we we do have our like protective bubble about where yeah. we have our where our self ends and the other person begins. Yeah. Or, well, doctor, <laughs> I, I would say though that the you know I totally respect what you're saying because you're talking about healthy boundaries, not push people away boundaries as much as you are setting standards and they're healthy. So I totally agree with you and. That's where a lot of us get confused because we think a boundary is just shutting someone off or maybe just protecting you in your bauble. It's not. But that's actually about just establishing standards of how you think you should be treated and yeah. And yeah, how you'll interact with somebody in the world. How you interact. So tip here. number two is <laughs> set your boundaries. Yeah, healthy boundaries for sure. Healthy boundaries. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Ding. <laughs> Oh my gosh! You didn't say that I couldn't be dorky. <laughs> that was not in the email. It was in the fine print. I'm oh, sorry you missed it. <laughs> darn! Uh, too late yeah. now. <laughs> well, those are some good tips. You got any others for us? Yeah. So let's see. I would say I'm going to go back to that one about setting standards. Your viewers and my viewers also they're givers, helpers, healers, and they tend to put themselves out there so much. That they are thinking, well, if I do this, am I being taken advantage of? Right. You said, again, back to setting your own standards. I didn't leave that set because I didn't want that to be how I dealt with a challenge. Yeah. Now, do I want to go back to another one of those? <laughs> no. Well, no. I learned the lesson, check mark, feel good about it. And wow, I got a hidden reciprocity or a hidden reward that I didn't expect. And Really, I was shocked, and it was a career changer for me because yep. after starting to do the national producing and working with one celeb at that kind of national level, then it was Schwarzenegger and Tommy Lee Jones, and wow, the list goes on. What was and, that like? Well, it was hilarious because they said uh, this was back before I was producing, and it was I, I made some of those connections as the artist, as a image expert, and they said, uh, "Yeah, we understand that you're the you're the top celebrity image expert. We should work with." And and uh, as soon as I hung up, I told my assistant, "They think I'm a celebrity." <laughs> I was like, I was like oh, oh, "Wow!" Because it was a funky title. But here's the cool thing: is like earning people's admiration. I mean, I teach people about how to have an influencer brand, but it's not just be a just add water expert learn, you know, spend a lot of money on marketing and branding, and then make yourself that there's an earning that I've seen you, you've been walking the talk, and you have the years of experience, Thanks. and the success stories in yourself and with others. And so yeah, when you know, I always say, if you're not branding yourself, other people will brand you will, but still try to think about what is important to your target market and you know, your audience, the people that you serve, and how are they going to think of you? So that just affects your your language, but in the end, they're gonna they're gonna brand you if they think right. that you are the great conversational that you you know pull these great tips and stories out of people like you do. They're already thinking that. Yeah, you know? that's a really good point. Thanks. So you know we're kind of blending into or running into different ways of sharing your heart. So kind of started with relationships. We got our friendship relationship, which is amazing, and you know the romantic side partners, but we also share our heart through our businesses. Yeah. And I don't want to forget that because I think so often when we're on our working day and we're in, we're in our working mode, we tend to sometimes think of it just as a job. Yeah. Not me. I just love what I do. It's really fun. I call the OR my happy place, which is <laughs> awesome. And I tell this story frequently where, you know, over the years and seeing thousands of patients as a physician, you never have the choice of who is going to be on the other side of the door, right? And it's taken me a long time, but it's also molded who I am to learn how to open that door and just love whoever is on the other side, meet them where they are and take care of them and, and help fix them. So I think for me in the workplace, it's a very easy thing. I think for me on the camera, <laughs> this has been a challenge. I'm learning that. That's another way of sharing your heart through business. Not everybody can relate to 
sharing our heart through the camera and not everybody's going to be on camera, but some are, right, right. but everybody works. Yeah. And I think when we learn in our work life, no matter what we're doing, what our employment is or what we're doing, if we are able to start looking at our clients or the people that we serve with our heart and how we can serve them and help yeah. them, then it makes the work day a whole lot better for one and the work environment with others yeah. better too. I but, feel um, you. I definitely feel you. And, you know, so sharing your heart and business, like you're saying, um, regardless of the camera situation, I mean, you know, a lot of people know me as the media trainer part. So, you know, that comes up a lot, but it doesn't matter whether you are in person, you're proctoring, you're on stage, you're training, you one-to-one groups, but many businesses start to the point where they are going to be on a webcam or something. Right. And so I think the point about having that sharing your heart to camera is if I don't have somebody there in person, how do I connect with them and really, you know, let them feel the things that they can't feel when they're not in yeah. person? Like, how and, can we help our audience feel part of this conversation ex- today? Exactly. So, I mean, for you, it's your audience. So you're going to reference them more by looking at the camera. And mm-hmm. for me, I'm going to look at you more because as a guest, I would look at the host a little bit more. And so those are just a couple of little tactical things. But let's teach, teach, teach. Right. And we think we're Vanas or something. You know? <laughs> but uh, I would say that just to go deeper, that applies to everyone. For me, you know, I grew up in a house where you don't be seen, don't be heard, because that'll be a bad difference. Right. Yep. You're, you can't make blend, a difference. Blend it and be quiet. All right. Right. Stay out of the way. Right. Domestic violence is, uh, you know, in helping to caretake for my my brother co-parenting for quite a few years, about a decade. Wow. This, my main thought was I'm a person behind the scenes. And that's why I produced and I was production crew for over 10 years before I did the other 10, 15, <coughs> 20 years. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I, I was, you get at a point where you start stop taking <laughs> you claim you for all your credit. For I was like, throw that page of the resume away. <laughs> you know, that's too many. It's too many. Just go with the top line. Yeah, because it's like, oh, well, I'm old. You know? But again, yeah, no, I love what I do. I love what I do. So I would say, you know, in closing on that is being seen, being heard and making a difference. What are some tactical tips on that to make it easy? And one is you don't even think about the camera or the audience or other people watching when your main goal is to, you know, fall in love with them and serve them. And a lot of times we fall in love with our service because I know that's, I get really proud, right? You've seen me over the years. I just, I want to look here, we got this and Mm -hmm. we got that. I'm so excited. But at any point in time, if it's about what I want to do and not what's important to you, you know, I I can't lose that connection. Right. So I'd say fall in love with your client more than your service. Mm Mm-hmm. And also, when you are in that moment, you don't even remember that there's a camera on you. Right. And then the last thing I would say about that is that, you know, people forgive flaws, they don't forgive fakes. So it's okay to make mistakes. In fact, some of my faux pas, you know, on a on a stage or camera or TV, that's... That's the stuff that they like you because they get to see you being yourself or how you gracefully recover or how you, you know, are okay with your nerdness, whatever. (laughs) It's your vulnerability, your authenticity. Yeah. Well, there's power in vulnerability. And like we've talked about many times, it's okay to show the scar. It's not like you're showing the wound. Right. I love that saying. That's one of my favorite sayings that you taught me way back when we started working together. And at first I... I had to think about it. Like, what does that mean to show somebody the scar, not the wounds? And, yeah, you know, it really means not to show all the bloody mess and the gore behind it. It's uh, to tell the story yeah. with the perspective of, okay, this is something that happened. Here's what I learned. Here's yeah. what I'm sharing yeah. out of that story as my soul continues to grow yeah. on this journey. And thanks for sharing that yeah. part of you with me as I share yeah. mine with you. Well, misery loves company, but we'd all prefer to have like a leader of inspiration who can show you the way and give you these success tips and show you how not to stay in misery. Yeah. So the other thing, the wound is almost a symbol of pride and achievement. I'm sorry, the scar, whereas the wound is still going through it. And it's just a little quick tip for a lot of us who aren't used to sharing our vulnerability in a, in a moment, in a story, you know, in some sort of a tip. If you're reliving it to the point where it's making you not feel good in that moment, then that's where we want to have a little bit more work, you know, on ourselves. Yeah, a little more healing, you know, before we maybe do that sharing. It's okay to to not do that. You know, you do it when you're ready. Yeah. But what you should be feeling is a sense of pride and empowerment that you're helping others 
not go down that path that you've been. So right. you can save them some time and even save them a scar. <laughs> save them a scar. <laughs> Yeah, I've got a great example of a scar. I, yeah. I didn't even share this with you. Oh, <laughs> no. Crack you up. Okay, I don't know if you can see it, but I put some makeup on it. I have a scar right here, right? Near your heart? Near my heart. <laughs> There's a scar here, <laughs> and it's so stupid. Somebody asked me the other day, like, where did you get that scar from? Well, it's from vanity. <laughs> How stupid is that, right? So I used to do these face peels, right? Yeah. And they're you know pretty strong acid face peel. And oh, when yeah. I was younger, before transitioning into menopause, yeah, yeah. Um, my skin could handle it. Yeah. And the last time I did one, this skin was too delicate for it, and it yeah. actually burned it. And so, you know, I'm not going to sit here and tell you about all the gory details and cry about it, because that would be being in the wound of it in the right, moment. Right, but right. the way I share this scar story is... I got this little reminder here that my beauty is not external and also not to do the face peels anymore on my skin yeah. because it just can't handle it anymore. But, you know, and the cool thing about sharing, say, even that specific story is, you know, you're a doctor, right? <laughs> and a lot of people will will say, oh, you know, that makes me feel better and I can relate to you more because I do stuff like that. And I think about my, look, you know what, we all, we're all a bunch of little Easter eggs and we can decorate ourselves however we want, right? Right. And it's okay if we want to do peels or not do peels or, and there shouldn't be, you know, judgment with all that. But when you did have some sort of an oopsie, it does actually make people feel better because uh, not only are they going down similar paths, but then they feel this, this camaraderie or this, you know, that they can relate to you like, oh, I didn't know she thought about stuff like that too. Yes. Yeah. They kind of see you as, oh, I'm Dr. Crockett, you know. <laughs> oh, and, please. Well, I mean, thank you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We had to teach each other that one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's like that other phrase I love. Uh, oh, I, you know, I have to do versus I get to do. I know. that. Well, that's a really good one that I use a lot in the, oh. my office, too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I have get to correct to myself all the time, you know. So I don't I, – if when I catch myself saying I have to do this, I go, I get uh, to do, and I, I reframe that in my head. Because yeah. if it's something I don't want to do, then I should have maybe look at some different life choices, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not everybody gets to do the day. Yeah, Every day is a gift. Yeah. yeah. Well, I wanted to say that I love the way that you share your heart with not just your audience, but with your guests. And I'm going to out oh. you since. Oh, uh, no. Did you see that? Oh, uh. <laughs> it's like, a, oh, yeah. Nobody can get. Oh, no. Only media trainers can get those reactions oh. within a split second. Oh, <laughs> but I want to tell people that I've been on over 3000 television productions. That's amazing. OK. Yes. And, you know, I'm a record holder for lifestyle appearances mm -hmm. on a local and nationally syndicated TV. I can't even. I can't imagine. remember going into one of them where I got greeted in the same way that you greet me. <laughs> <laughs> which is to come in the door and you call it a vortex. Yeah. <laughs> but, and she lures you in with your favorite <laughs> foods. <laughs> and um, yes, yes. Like I say lures, because we always have like, these lures, you know, like uh, where we give free content and stuff. So you give me free snacks. <laughs> and so you, well, you get people comfortable and then you do, you have a collaborative moment where you talk about what are we going to share with the audience? Yes. And it's not an overly structured, you know, with scripts or anything like that. We'll hit a couple of bullets maybe, but we break bread, so to speak. Well, literally, like, I think that's one of the most important things about how our show is, it has evolved. You know, it's taken us a long time to get to where we are here. I think that having people come in and eating together and sharing stories and getting to know each other over yeah. the food for that hour or two before we come up here to the studio. I think that is the thing it that is. is the, that sharing that heart yeah. and sharing the healthy food yeah. is like a huge dopamine endorphin lifter. And then out of those conversations, we get to curate what we want to share with the audience on this 30 minute podcast. Yeah. I think that's my niche. Yeah, we found a niche. I love it. Yeah, I've got little hidden cameras down there in the kitchen. <laughs> like, <laughs> like this angle, that angle. You know, here's the food camera, and then here's the vortex. You know, the, the camera. Counter. Yeah, the with table. All, that's the like the yeah yeah where I mean, everything happens. The you, energy. You've got all your virtuosas and your virtuosas. You know that you cultivate into your vortex, and and you have that collaboration and. 
it's very unique. And that's one of the things that I think for a unique selling proposition, I'm sorry, it's the branding person in me or just- <laughs> She the, can't help it. I can't help she it, yeah. Can't. Nerd <laughs> alert, let me tell you. But, uh, you know, but just being an audience member and, and saying, uh, wow, how, how does she get so much report? Is she best friends with everyone that she puts <laughs> on that set? Because not everyone, you know, did you have- you know, long, as much rapport with right. or well, I don't say rapport, but I'll just say uh, long term relationship relationships. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's just classic how you do that. It's awesome. Thank you. Yeah, I'm excited about moving forward with that branching out and actually sharing more meals and healthy conversations yeah. with, uh, with more and more people. So, yeah. you know, if you guys have ideas about oh ollie's had enough <laughs> ollie's had ollie's a, like, ollie has an idea ollie, ollie has an idea he's like i'm going to the other side to take a nap if you guys have uh interesting ideas about who you'd like to see on the show or who you'd like to see me have a conversation for or with uh, just let me know yeah. i think it's awesome and i think that we should like you know she's gonna kill me i'm like i think you should request recipes too oh <laughs> because i want to see the guest comments in with what was eaten that oh, day oh that's interesting i yeah. think it's really cool like i didn't ask permission on to out her on that but the thing is is she's just incredibly brave so you know i i mean i know you as a top robotics surgeon and you like try to throw shoe at me when i try to yeah, get, yeah, yeah. i have to stand really far away when i'm like you know she what is it it's like ah no way less than one percent or the one percentile i never get it perfect because she tries to interrupt me every time but you know it's your credentials are huge and so the last thing people expect is you're going to be in there cooking with your heart I know. And you were in there serving it up on a plate, my friend. It's so much fun. I never would have been somebody who cooks. And you know my story that I went whole food, plant-based. Well, yeah, mostly whole food, plant-based <laughs> about a year ago. You're my, uh, you, we're going to get shirts and say mostly vegan. Mostly vegan. <laughs> and not crap vegan, not Cheetos. Good, good vegan. I know, good vegan. No refined stuff. So, yeah. you know, that's a whole nother topic for yeah. another show. But yeah. I think the point is we've been able to cultivate that healing food food yeah. as a medicine right yeah. yeah into the conversations and incorporate that into the show which is about you know becoming your best your virtuosa self it, it is it is and, and actually you know it fits nicely so we've got our you know the intro to the show of what you know the dr crockett show is about and that common thread of you know heart and love and then your particular your seed that's this one right uh-huh. on love and so our segment today, like sharing your heart, like to the world, to yourself, through challenge, and even in business, because you got to have heart in business, yep. right? And then lastly, and most importantly, is how you pull it all together behind the scenes, what people can't even see and how you collaborate. And that is with love. So coincidentally, the vortex and the food that you put together is just a way for us to pull us all closer together. And it's, it makes it really special moments. And it's something I know not everybody gets to see. So I had to say that. So thank you for that so much. Thank you, Starly. I think this is the way businesses are evolving. I think we're on the edge of a evolution, a societal revolution. And I think in the past, businesses haven't always had heart. You know, capitalism is a nasty word to some people. But I think what we're seeing is more and more people looking at the purpose and the people uh, and sharing their heart yeah. as the main thing instead of the money being the main thing. Money will flow right. when you do the right thing and treat people the right way. So Yeah, yeah. Well definitely. I mean people think brands are cool, but people are inspired by people. Yep. Well thank you for being my first guest, Starly. I'm so thank grateful. You. What a fun show. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> yeah. I hope you'll like, share, come see us next week. Yeah. Yay, thank you. You're welcome. Bye. Thanks for listening to this episode of Becoming Virtuosa. To learn more, come visit us at drcrockett.com. That's drcrockett with two T's dot com. Or find us on YouTube for The Dr. Crockett Show. If you found this episode helpful or think it might help someone else, please like, subscribe, and share. This is how we grow together. Thanks, and I'll see you next week. Love always, Sue.